Hello and welcome to the MJ Take on Sports Fan Entertainment. It's time for yet another Tennessee Titans game recap. And then at the end of this video, I will discuss my takeaways from the results of the early games here on NFL Week 3. So the Tennessee Titans lost to the Oakland Raiders. I picked the Tennessee Titans to lose to the Oakland Raiders. And if you haven't already known, I'm a Tennessee Titans fan, okay? So this is a very interesting thing. A lot of Titans fans <laughs> that follow me... They feel as if I hate the team, that I'm not a real fan look. Why do I watch every game? Why do I come on here and talk about them for every single game they play, every single thing they do? I'm a damn fan, okay? Get over it. The problem is I'm an analytical fan. I'm an objective fan. I'm an analyst first and a fan second. That's what I am. That's who I am, okay? I know what you're going to say. You're going to say that the referees screwed this team, that they caught an offensive pass interference on Andre Johnson they shouldn't have, that, you know, Taylor Lewan, you know, ran in there and they called that penalty and they shouldn't have. And I'm going to tell you to shut up, okay? Because last week, what did I tell you? I told you, look, we probably should not have won that game. Why? Because the penalties last week were Tennessee Titans fans. The penalties last week were on our side. Eric Ebron of the Detroit Lions scored a touchdown. The, te the referees threw a penalty. They took it away. If they don't, the Lions win that game. Today, the Titans probably, you know, you could say should have had a touchdown to Andre Johnson. They called pass interference. The Titans lost the game. Equilibrium. That's just equilibrium, guys. I'm sorry. I hate to tell you. That's just the way it works. You got your calls last week. You got your touchdown last week. You got the Lions touchdown taken away. And then this week, you got screwed. I'm not going to complain. We got lucky last week, man. I tried to tell you. And then what happens in the NFL? You know, you give a little and you take a little. And then today, they're on the wrong side of the call. And I'm not that upset about it. Because last week, we probably should not have won that game, man. There was a lot of penalties that were on the Detroit Lions that should not have been. And then today, you could say that, you know, that was a bad call. I need to watch the call again because I didn't think it was that bad. And then when it comes to the Harry Douglas, you know, possibly could have been a, a, a defensive pass interference on TJ Carey at the very end of the game, the last throw by Marcus Mariota. I thought that ball was uncatchable. I need to watch it again, but I thought this ball was at least three or four feet ahead or on top, uh, you know, over the head of Harry Douglas. I thought it was way too high. I thought it was uncatchable. I need to watch it again, but I don't think Shaquille O'Neal or LeBron James could have came down that damn ball, let alone Harry Douglas, who's sitting at about six foot, you know, 190 pounds. I'm not surprised Harry Douglas didn't come down with that. I didn't think there was a chance he could come down with that. That's that's a bad throw by Marcus Mariota. And speaking of Marcus Mariota, look, some people are trashing him on Twitter, saying that he's regressing. I, I'm not going to go there yet, but I'll tell you this, he damn sure ain't progressing. I mean, this guy today was... Uh, just inconsistent. The turnovers, man, they're bad. I mean, they're really bad right now. And, you know, the one interception that was intended for Rashard Matthews, you know, some people are saying Rashard Matthews should have, you know, fought for that ball a little bit more. I don't know. I felt that ball was behind Rashard Matthews, and I saw him actually try to fight for that ball. And during the battle with Sean Smith trying to take it away, when Sean Smith had it, I saw Rashard Matthews still trying to get that ball back. I saw Rashard Matthews trying for that ball. The other interception, uh, I thought that was completely on him as well. And then I thought he should have had another interception when he just threw the ball up to Jason Morrow and it ended up getting caught by him. But I thought that one should have been intercepted as well. He's fumbling the ball. You know, the guy loves to run the football. You know, having the ball out here running around. Dude, this is in college, dude. When will you learn? Dude, you're going to fumble, okay? You're going to fumble the football. Stop it, please. You're just ruining these games. You're losing these games. I mean, it's not completely on you, but man, three turnovers, three turnovers. I mean, I thought all of them were on you, okay? Even the most biased of Tennessee Titans fans can agree that at least two were on you. Maybe at least one, the fumble. I mean, come on, dude. You just got to realize, dude, you're going to fumble. That's just your move, okay? And you have to prevent that move by not having the football out here. You're trying to be competitive. You're trying to get a first down. It's not working. 
The Tennessee Titans offense right now stinks. 10 points today, 16 points last week, 17, or is it 16 points week one? They're not putting up points. You're not going to win football games like this. They're not putting up any points. And people trying to tell me, oh, DGB stinks. We could use DGB right now. Because although DGB can have some poorly, uh, poorly run routes and, you know, can do some clownish plays, he has some big plays to his game. We saw the huge touchdown against the Jacksonville Jaguars. This is a guy that averaged 17.2 yards per reception. You're telling me that we couldn't use some of that right now? 17 yards per reception? Oh, we could use that right now. Especially looking at Andre Johnson. What's the difference between him and DGB? I'll tell you. DGB is better. DGB is more explosive. DGB is better than Andre Johnson. And yet Andre Johnson is the one that we need to prioritize over DGB. We saw from Harry Douglas today. Harry Douglas isn't that good. And yet we have Harry Douglas instead of DGB. So that's another reason why this trade ended up being poorly for this uh, Tennessee Science football team. Another thing, you know, I don't know why, if we're really trying to be this smash mouth team, why are we running the football more? I mean, DeMarco Murray, this guy's been very successful. You know, today he was pretty successful running the football. Why hasn't he ran for 20 carries yet? I mean, at least 20 carries. He had like, what, 17 today? He should run for 20, 25 carries. I don't know why we're not running the football more. You know, that's something we should be doing because obviously we just can't move the football down the field at all. I saw one deep pass today. It was incomplete, of course. I mean, the, the ver there is no vertical component to this offense whatsoever. And it's going to limit this football team for the rest of the season. They need to find a vertical threat, a deep threat. And I mean, I think Rashard and Matthews could do that. He did it for Miami. I don't know why he can't do that for this football team. I don't know if Mike Malarkey isn't calling the plays. Well, he's definitely not calling the plays. I, I can see that. Terry Robisky. You know, this offense stinks. You know, that's just the problem with this football team. Now, again, they're going to win some games this year. I mean, they're going to lose next week at Houston. The week after that at Miami, I think they're going to win that game. Okay, I think they're going to win that game. Game after that uh, versus the Cleveland Browns. I think they're going to win that game. They're going to be 3-3. Three and three. But then from there, I think I think we're in trouble because we're going to be going up against some teams that are going to score points on us and we're not going to be able to score and we're going to be in big trouble after that so I'll tell you right now we're going to be three and three that's my prediction right now we're going to Lose next week, beat Miami, beat Cleveland. But the problem is that's Miami and that's Cleveland. And then from there, I, I, we'll, we'll have to see. But this offense stinks and it, it pains me that Marcus Mariota is just not progressing, man. I mean, we, we saw huge leaps from Derek Carr, you know, from Blake Bortles from their first and second years. And they weren't even good at all in their first years. Marcus Mariota was good in his first year. So I was, I was even thinking maybe he can become an elite pass or in the NFL, no, and I don't know if it's him, I, I think it's honestly this offense, I think Malarkey, Robisky, you know, they're Malarkey and they're Robisky, they're, they stink, I mean, come on, that's the worst offensive coach and uh, head coach tandem in the NFL, it's the worst, I mean, it's not even close, the only thing that comes close is the Buffalo Bills with Rex Ryan and Terry Robisky, and even those, I mean, I, no, sorry, Rex Ryan and whoever the hell the offensive coordinator is right now, and even those idiots put up 33 today on Arizona, we're not putting up 33 this year, forget about that, that ain't happening, okay, so with that in mind, for the Raiders, okay, you got a victory, good, I have you guys winning the AFC West, Right now, the Broncos are looking good, man. So y'all are in trouble there. But I still think you guys are at least going to be a wild card team this year. Derek Carr looks great. His ball placement on some of these crossing routes, some of these sideline throws, man, it's so good. I don't know where like this accuracy came from because he was not this accurate in college. His accuracy was his biggest problem in college and his inconsistent footwork. And you can see some of that, but he's really cleaned it up. You guys have your franchise quarterback. Congratulations on that. Big win for you guys. Now, next week, you guys go to Baltimore. It's going to be tough to win two straight road games, so I think you guys might lose that. But at the same time, the Ravens, are they're 3-0, but I, I'm not buying their 3-0 yet. So you guys might go to Baltimore and win, but we'll see. I still like your chances, though, to make the playoffs. So let's move to my takeaways from the early games today. And my picks thus far have not been very good at all, but the same goes for a lot of people out here. Let's start with the Green Bay Packers against the Detroit Lions. What did I tell you guys? Aaron Rodgers is still great. Shut up, okay? I tried to tell you the guy's fantastic. His game against Minnesota wasn't even that bad. And then looking at what Minnesota did today, 
we just have to sit back and say, oh, okay, it was just Minnesota. Aaron Rodgers is still great. The problem is when they go to the playoffs, and it looks like they may be the, the Vikings in the playoffs, you know, can they win there? I don't know, but they're going to get there, okay? They're going to get there. And Marvin Jones, I tried to tell y'all to draft him in fantasy. Hopefully y'all did because this guy continues to put up huge points. What was it? 34 fantasy points today in standard ESPN leagues, Yahoo leagues. Ridiculous production for Marvin Jones. I tried to tell you, at least 1,100 yards. It's looking more like 12 or 1,300 after this 205-yard receiving game. Marvin Jones, I see you. Because, Lions, y'all go up against the Chicago Bears next week in Chicago. You're going to win that one, trust me. And from there, we'll see what you guys can do moving forward. So don't get too down after this uh, loss. Aaron Rodgers just put up points on you. Don't start the tanking campaign. Y'all are going to be about 7-9 this season, but not much better than that. We move on to the Denver Broncos. Again, this team's just winning games, dog. They're just winning games. And they're so good in the fourth quarter, man. They're so disciplined, so well coached, so smart, so good. You know, maybe we need to start considering this team being an AFC contender. Not only contender, but maybe favorite. You know, we'll see what the Steelers do today. I still think they're probably the favorite to me. And the Patriots, they're still looking really good. I mean, this is going to be a hell of a playoff in the AFC. And that's something I haven't said in years prior. So, hey, you know, we'll see. Broncos looking great, though. Bengals, y'all lost. Don't worry. I have you guys still making the playoffs, but you got to beat the Dolphins this Thursday. I think you will, but you got to do it. And, hell, you were very impressive in the first half. The problem is the Broncos are just better. I knew it, and you knew it too. We move on to the Minnesota Vikings. You know, and they beat the Carolina Panthers today. And I, I've probably been the biggest Minnesota Vikings skeptic in the world, but I just have to shut up at this point. The Vikings are good. And the Vikings are really, really good. I mean, they went to Carolina. They won easily, 22-10. to 10. And look... I'll tell you this, though. Although I will admit I was wrong on this Minnesota Vikings team, mainly just based off the premise that I didn't think their defense was this good. But, man, it is great. Like, possibly all-time great, okay? But I still don't think you should have traded for Sam Bradford. And I think it's getting proven. Because if your defense is, 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 is this good, why do you need Sam Bradford? I think any quarterback could have led you all to victory today. I think Sean Hill could have definitely done that. I think any quarterback you could have traded a third or fourth round pick for, like Mike Glennon or, you know, Colin Kaepernick could have done this for you today. So I still don't think you should have traded for Sam Bradford. But I'll tell you this. Oh, you guys are looking like a playoff team and even a Super Bowl contender. And that is something I didn't think I'd say. So I'll give that to you. But still, I don't think y'all should have traded for Sam Bradford. And if it comes to a playoff game against Green Bay, against Seattle, against Arizona, whatever... I ain't trusting Sam Bradford to pull that one out for you. I ain't doing it. But we'll see. We'll get there. Or we'll cross that bridge when we get there. We move on. And Carolina, by the way, uh, you know, don't be too concerned. I think the Vikings are just really good. Uh, I mean, you guys would be a little bit concerned. I mean, I have you guys being an 11-5 and team this year. I, I think that's about right. Maybe 10-6 and now. But, I mean, that's just about right. You guys should still win your division. The Falcons aren't very good. They're okay. They're not very good. Same goes with the Bucks. Same goes with the New Orleans Saints, although they need to just get a victory right now. So you guys should still win the NFC South, but you got to play better than this. I expect more from you, Carolina. We move on to Baltimore beating the Jacksonville Jaguars. And I tried to trust the Jaguars, man. And they were close. You know, they almost put it out for me, but they couldn't get it done. Blake Borholes. I don't know why this guy stinks. I mean, th that's just the damn case. This guy stinks right now. What was it? Three interceptions today for Blake Bortles. All of them in critical points of the game. I, this guy's playing horrible. I mean, that's just the damn truth. I don't care if he throws one little nice touchdown to Allen Robinson or one little nice touchdown to this guy. Overall, these interceptions are poor. They're becoming at huge moments of the game, and he's limiting the Jacksonville Jaguars' growth as a football team. Their defense actually played well today. They only put up 17 points offensively, and that was the reason they lost. And yet, threw interceptions today as well. This is on you, Bortles. And next week, y'all got to go up against the Indianapolis Colts in what I believe will be a battle of two 0-3 teams. If y'all don't win that, Y'all need to start thinking about the top five pick in the NFL draft because that's where you're probably headed. And Baltimore, y'all are 3-0. 
and this is a place I didn't think y'all would be. We'll see again if it continues because I'm just a little bit skeptical right now. I'm not buying it entirely, but I'll tell you this. You look like a wild card contender. I still like the Steelers to win the AFC North, but you look like a wild card contender. We move on to the Arizona Cardinals. Oh, my Super Bowl pick, the Arizona Cardinals. Losing 33-18 to to the Buffalo Bills. Let's start with the Cardinals. Man, what is going on, man? I tr I'm trying to have faith in you guys. I'm trying to hold steadfast. But y'all are not making it easy right now. Buffalo Bills ran all over y'all. Y'all couldn't move the football until late into the game. The defense wasn't looking good at all. Letting up huge runs. Jeez, y'all got to get it together right now. Robert Kendichi, this guy's being a clown. I tried to tell you. I gave you a D for drafting him. But you didn't listen to me. <sighs> Arizona, y'all got to get it together. And then as for the Buffalo Bills, okay, y'all are staying afloat. Okay, this proves you will not be, well, I don't know if it proves, but you will probably not be a 3-13 and team this year. Okay, I had you guys going 6-10. and I'm sticking with that prediction. But you're going to win your fair share amount of games. You're going to win some divisional games. You're going to lose, I mean, you're going to win some upsets like this, but you're going to disappoint overall, and you're just not going to make the playoffs this year. That's just the case. But hey, LaShawn McCoy is back, and that's nice to see. We move on to the Washington Redskins beating the New York Giants. And if you watch my picks video, and part of me wanted to pick the Redskins to win this game, and it was based off of my thesis that the NFC East is in stable equilibrium. Which, what does that mean? Okay, it basically means there's no way in hell a team is gonna, you know, go all the way to the top while another team stays at the bottom. They go, they're going to tend to stay in the middle. They're not gonna separate. They're gonna tend to stay in the middle. But with that in mind, I just could, I didn't have the balls to pick the Redskins to win this game. I should have. Today, Eli Manning reverted back to the old Eli Manning through horrible interceptions today, especially the late one to Sua Cravens. Man, that was bad, dog. What were you thinking, Eli Manning? I know Peyton Manning is sitting down, you know, Peyton on a Sunday morning. He's sitting down watching you on his NFL Sunday ticket, thinking, Eli, what are you doing? Okay, because it was a horrible throw. Still have the Giants winning the NFC East. They should still win the NFC East. You were encouraged by Sterling Shepard today. Eldo Beckham got frustrated but ended up with over 120 yards. So everything is still good. The Redskins were desperate. They won. Relax. You guys should still win the NFC East. And the Redskins, you guys are staying afloat. Okay, you're doggy paddling right now. You're staying afloat. Good for you. Let's see if you can pull that out next week. We move on to the last game, the Cleveland Browns. Versus the Miami Dolphins. This one just wrapped up. I didn't see the conclusion to it because I'm recording. But the Dolphins won. Good. Um, for Cleveland, though, I will tell you this. You have to be encouraged by the coaching abilities of Hugh Jackson. You guys are not getting embarrassed. You guys are being competitive. You guys are finding ways to put points on the scoreboard. I can see your team fighting for Hugh Jackson. You have to be encouraged by that. If I'm Cleveland, I'm going to give Hugh Jackson maybe like four years. Maybe, I don't know, three. At, at least just three years, man. Just let him rebuild. You know, just give him time. Let him rebuild. Don't, you know, overreact. Let them, because they're not going to be very good this year. They're going to win probably two or three games. But this guy's getting points on the scoreboard, being creative, you know, being a good offensive coordinator, being a good offensive coach for this football team being a good head coach for this football team so you have to be encouraged by that because there is no way you guys could win this game and you almost put it out for Miami you continue to disappoint Ryan Tannehill continues to disappoint a little bit I saw some people clamoring for Matt Moore in one of my bold predictions heading into this season it was that Ryan Tannehill was going to be benched by week eight I still think we're on that trajectory, and I think Ryan Tannehill is in trouble. They won this game, so he's buying himself another two weeks, maybe three weeks, but I think there are some losses coming up in a row, and they're going to go to Matt Moore before you know it, but hey, you got a victory. I guess you're okay with that, but you're just not a playoff team, so don't even start thinking about that. So there you go. Those are my thoughts on the NFL Week 1 early games. I'll be back to discuss the afternoon game and the Sunday night football game and tomorrow to discuss the Monday night football game. So if you enjoy the video, make sure to like and most importantly to subscribe. And until next time, this has been the MJ Take on Sports Fan Entertainment and I'm out. Peace.